Apparently, 90% of people depend on an alarm clock to wake them up in the morning. 21% don't make their beds when they get out of it. Two thirds of the population eat cereal regularly as a means of staying regular, and half the UK population would like to fly to the moon. Perhaps more worryingly, 62% of us enjoy squeezing our spots. But how do we know these things? And who wants to find them out? Companies often rely on finding out information about the general public to help them stay in business. Take ice cream manufacturers. They want to know what kind of flavours people like, how much money people want to pay, and also the kind of packaging that people find attractive. By asking the right questions, companies can keep in touch with their customers, and customers can get what they want. Today, Maths for Real is about finding out information by asking questions. We're going to be looking at the art of designing and carrying out questionnaires. And the information that we're going to be gathering is all about fairground rides. So we've come to Blackpool's Pleasure Beach to gather some top roller coaster research to fasten your seatbelts. Oh! <laughs> Blackpool Pleasure Beach calls itself the roller coaster capital of the world. The newest ride is the Valhalla. Roller coasters have always been the most popular ride. We have ten here at Pleasure Beach. Ten. So we, uh, we thought the next most popular ride is water rides. So we <clears throat> put in a, a, a log flume and to make it even more exciting we've turned it into a dark log flume. The new water ride costs £15 million to build. But how much are they going to charge to go on it? Uh, about £4.50 which is the same as the big one. The Pleasure Beach use years of experience when it comes to pricing their rides. £4.50 is their top price. What Katie and I are going to find out is whether you'd be prepared to pay more. Now the first thing you need to do when you're devising a questionnaire is be clear about what you're trying to find out. So we've decided to ask people if they pay more than £4.50 to go on a roller coaster. When you've decided what information you want to find out, the next thing to do is to think of a question or questions that you're going to ask. You need to test these out on a few people to find out whether they're good questions or whether they need a little bit of improving, and that's called a pilot survey. Now, to keep it simple today, we've decided to ask one question, which is, would you be prepared to spend more than £4.50 for a roller coaster ride? So that's the question. Now, with pilot surveys, you're bound to make mistakes. So see if you can spot any ways in which we can improve our survey. I need to try and find 20 people to answer this question. I don't think it's going to be a problem. Let's give it a go. I decided to ask people as they came off a roller coaster. Would you be prepared to pay more than £4.50 to go on a roller coaster? Uh, it's a good one. If it's a good one. If it was, yeah, if it's yeah. state of the art, top of the range, yeah. definitely. Yeah. I went to ask people out on the street. Would you pay more than £4.50 to go on a state of the art roller coaster? No. I wouldn't go on any of them. State of the art, the no. best roller no, coaster no. wise. No. Not at all? No. No. You don't. No. 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 Beth, you pay 50 me. Yeah, if it's a good yeah. ride, yeah. yeah. No. no. No, not at all. What about you? The best roller coaster in the world? Yeah. Yeah, yeah definitely. Yeah. Would you? Yeah. Lovely. Thanks so much, guys. Yeah. Definitely, yes! <laughs> Look at that! The yeses are winning now! No, no. £4.50 is enough. Yeah. So what did you get, then? I got eight yeses and twelve noes. What about you? Fourteen six to the yeses. Fourteen yeses and six noes. Um, how did you find it? I found a lot of people didn't quite know what I was asking. I felt the question was a little bit vague because uh, a lot of the people weren't sure uh, what kind of roller coaster I was mm. talking about. They said a lot of them said, "Oh, it depends what kind of roller coaster." Mm. What about you? The question. I had problems with vagueness and also the cost issue. We were saying, would they be prepared to pay more than four pounds fifty? And lots of them said, "Yeah, I'd pay fifteen. I'd pay twenty pounds." But lots said, "I'd pay five pounds." Now, obviously, yeah. they're saying yes, they'd pay more, but it's, it would have been better if we could have been far more precise about the amount we were going to charge them as yeah, well. Yeah. Um, and there's some other factors as well, I'd imagine. Well, I found on, on the yeses and noes, I'm not sure now how many of those noes were like older people relatively yeah, or, yeah, or yeah. younger people. And with the yeses the same, you know, it'd be quite useful to know what age those people mm. were. And as well as that, I had a couple of groups that had adults and uh, younger people. And if the adults said one thing, the younger people tended to agree. And that, well, I wonder if that influenced their decision yeah. as well. So obviously, um, as well as making a number of improvements to our questionnaire about people's ages, about um, being more concise with the question. And that, yeah. um, I didn't actually pay much attention to how I was going to collect the data. <laughs> Unlike Katie, who's got a very neat a tally, um, chart. tally chart there, I <laughs> haven't. So it's very important to be aware of how you're going to write down and collect all the data, because mine is, frankly, a bit of a mess. So here's our pilot survey findings. Use precise questions. Record the person's age. 
use a range of prices to record your results and design a data capture sheet to meet your needs. This data capture sheet allows us to record both the age of the person we're interviewing and the price that they would be prepared to pay. When it comes to age, older people often don't like being asked outright, so it's a good idea to offer them a choice of age ranges. You can do the same for price, but always make sure the categories don't overlap. It's not just what question you ask, it's also where you ask it. I was asking people out and about on the street, whereas you were asking people who were just coming off the roller coaster ride. Yeah, they'd just paid £4.50 to go on the ride. Did that influence their decision? They'd had a huge thrill. Maybe they'd be more inclined to pay double next time. Remember, when and where you ask a question might affect your results. For example, you probably wouldn't ask people's opinion of veggie sausages outside your local butchers. So, how can we improve on our survey? What do we need to do to make sure that the information we collect is actually going to be of use to the people at the Pleasure Beach? The results of our pilot study show that there's more to carrying out a survey than simply asking any old question, which is why we've come to London to find out how the experts do it. Mm, now, here at British Market Research Bureau headquarters, there are people whose job it is to design questionnaires and carry out surveys every day, so I reckon we should go and have a chat. Absolutely. I'm calling from BMRB Social Research. We're trying to find out how much people would be prepared to pay for a roller coaster ride, and we need some advice. So, how should we go about collecting information? Okay, uh, there's lots of things to think about. The first thing is probably who you're actually going to be asking the question to, because everyone really could go on the roller coaster ride. It's not just different types of uh, specific types of people. So, we can uh, potentially ask everyone in the country that question. And the other thing is the actual question we should be asking them, and we want to try and keep it as clear and as simple as possible for them, and also give them as much information as they need to answer the question properly. A photograph would be ideal. Mm. So a good question to ask might be, um, if you were given the chance to go on the most state-of-the-art, high-tech roller coaster ride, what's the most amount of money that you'd be prepared to pay for one ride? That's right. I mean, it's being specific. They know exactly what they've got to answer, and then you should get some good data from it. How many people should we ask to get a representative result? Because you mentioned that uh, potentially you could ask everybody. We could, but that would be unrealistic. It would. It would cost a lot of money. Yeah. So we have to compromise to some extent. So if you're trying to represent the whole of the country, about a thousand people would be a good number to start from. Right. That's a fair representation. It is. I've never actually been chosen to do one of your uh, questionnaires, so how do you find your interviewees? Well, there's lots of different ways, and if they're all around the country, the cheapest and best way to contact them is by telephone, if it's quite a short questionnaire. We can always actually go in the street, and you'll have seen market researchers with their clipboards doing that, yeah. uh, or we can go into people's homes if they're longer interviews. Um, sometimes we do interviews up to half an hour long. Okay. Um, and also now we're using the internet as well. It's time for BMRB to put all their theory into practice for us. This team behind us are working currently on the specially commissioned Maths for Real questionnaire, which is a very flash indeed. Uh, the question being, if you were given the chance to go on the most high-tech and state-of-the-art roller coaster ride ever, what's the most amount of money you'd be prepared to pay for one ride? And the lucky 1,000 people are being selected at random as we speak. Mm -hmm. uh, and that's just so that we get a good spread of the population, not just, for example, teenagers or people from Birmingham. Mm. Now, there's 1,000 people to call, so we've decided that we're going to give the guys a hand here. Uh, so we best get on. Good afternoon. My name's Ben Shepherd. I'm calling from the British Market Research Bureau in London. I was wondering if you could Katie spare a few minutes of your time. I'm willing to take part in this uh, interview. It takes about 10 minutes. I promise I'll run through as fast as I can. With questionnaires, it's important to be able to spot a good or a bad question. It's one of the things you get asked in maths exams. Take a look at this. Do you go to nightclubs? Sometimes, occasionally, or never? Is it a good question or a bad question? It's actually a bad question because the options it gives you are too vague. What sometimes to one person might be occasionally to another. It needs to be more specific, like, do you go to nightclubs more than once a month? less than once a month, or never. Here's another one. Do you agree that smoking is bad for you? Is it a good question or a bad question? It isn't vague, but it's another bad question because it already suggests that the right answer is yes. It's what's called a biased question. It's time to put your understanding of good and bad questions to the test. 
I went out on the street to ask some questions on your behalf. Some of them are good questions and they deserve a tick, and some of them are bad and deserve to be trashed. It's up to you to decide. Is this a good question or a bad question? When did you last visit the cinema? About a week ago. So, in the last seven days. <laughs> when did you last visit the cinema?、Oh, about twenty-one days. Fifteen to twenty-one days、mm. ago. When did you last visit the cinema?、Um, about eighteen, fourteen days ago, and saw Final Destination. Okay. When、yeah. did you last visit the cinema?、Nah, I went with her. I went with her. <laughs> <laughs> That was a good question. Categorising the answers gives you plenty of useful information. What about this question? What do you think of cars?、Um, I'm going to think against them. What do you think of cars?、Um, if they're fashionable, yeah, I like them. If not, then... <laughs> no. What do you think of cars? <laughs> Same as Errol, really. Nothing against cars. This is a bad question. The answers it gives are simply too vague. Is this a good or a bad question? Do you agree that exercise is good for you? Yeah, it is. Yes, it's very good. Do you agree that exercise is good for you? As long as you don't do it in excess, yeah. It's a bad question because it already suggests that the right answer is yes, so it's biased. Back at BMRB, our maths for real questionnaires have been completed. Just over a thousand people responded, and those responses have been fed into a central computer, which has compiled and analysed all the data. Now, remember, we wanted to find out what the maximum amount of money was that people would be prepared to pay to go on a state-of-the-art roller coaster ride. The results of the survey show that the price people are prepared to pay falls with age. 16 to 24-year-olds would pay an average of £12.90 for one ride, compared to over 65-year-olds who would only pay £3.40. The desire to ride a roller coaster also falls with age. 83% of 16 to 24-year-olds would go on, compared to only 24% of over 65-year-olds. The most popular answer is 129 people saying five pounds. So, charging five pounds, you get at least those 129 people, and you get all the other people who said more than that as well. Of course. Right. Yeah. So, what can we take back to Blackpool with us? Okay. Well, the answer to the original question is really nine pounds eighty of everyone who wanted to go on the roller coaster. That was the average maximum price they'd say. However, Blackpool can lower the price and get more people to go on the roller coaster. And five pounds we saw was a very popular price, so perhaps that should be the price that they're charging. Time to take our results back to Blackpool Pleasure Beach to see what their reaction is. Well, I'm very encouraged by it because the the big one, which is our most popular ride, is only four pounds fifty. Do you think that?、Um... Seeing as so many of them are keen to pay five pounds to go on, you maybe could put the price up a little bit, coin in a bit more. I think、uh, the secret of our success is providing value for money, and if、uh, we're beating people's expectations by charging less than they expect, then that's terrific. Absolutely, I agree. Indeed. Can we go on the roller coasters again, please? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you can carry out a survey to find out all kinds of information. But think carefully about its purpose. Decide exactly what you want to find out, and also why.、Mm, keep the questions short and to the point. And remember to collect and record all of your results very, very carefully. Very carefully. Now, Katie, it's been a long, hard day. How about I treat you to a ride on the big one? Oh no, 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 no!、Come、I hate、on. roller coasters. No, you don't. No, 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 you no. You know no, you no, love. You'd、them. have to pay me. A